So I wear a suit and tie. I got rid of the suit, and then you look like this. <laughs> it's it's a practice time. Believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm way more comfortable like this. I, like I don't believe that. I, I, I don't believe that at all. I don't I swear believe. You, I just when I have to get dressed up, I like it, but I'd rather be like this. And actually, I'd rather be in a t-shirt, shorts, or flip flops. I have the jersey shirt. That's why I'd rather. Be so you feel like you have to present yourself with the product. But that's yeah, the professional thing. Well, to you do. don't try to teach our guys that. You know, it's not about me. When I'm coaching them, I'm representing Bill Romo. It's not. So I better be professional. No matter what I want to do, I have to. I really think coaches should coach with specials. They really should because. Well, why don't you? If that's what you want to do. Because I feel like I'm representing Bill Romo, and I have to be professional. Yeah, but you're an individualist. You don't have to. But I'm a part of something bigger than myself. That's what I'm trying to teach my players. All right. All right. Because when you're in a huddle and you got a nice suit on, they're sweating all over you. you could, and I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. Those are not cheap suits either, Jack. No. And I'm know, saying, this I got, is I got crazy. like a $99 jacket over there from <laughs> Value City, and yours is like $5,000. All right, you're bigger than usual. I'm on it, you're a I'm lot on bigger than usual. You can, you can come on, it's okay. <laughs> We're in form practice. Well, I gave them to you guys today. Right, right. He would never do that to Channel right. 6. Did you notice the big camera here? <laughs> You're bigger than usual. You're a lot bigger than usual. Now, I've, I've also been hearing great stuff about the move. I know you had hepatitis B last year, but still, the guy's a serious player. And you're hopeful with that be accurate? I really think that. He's, he's, he's a good player. No, he's still... He's still a young man you know, who can look bad at times, but at times can look like dominant. I think it's probably going to take him a year before he's really a dominant player, but I think he can be a big factor in the future. And he can run the floor. He's, he's live and gets up and down and he's a great guy he's, to have. He's one of those guys that's, that's very intelligent. He's like a 3 age student, so it actually slows him down because he wants to do everything perfectly. I think after a year this year, Playing, learning everything. Next year we'll see him blossom. This year is still going to be a big factor. Now you got a strange leadership dynamic here. You had an alpha dog, an unquestioned alpha dog, for two, three, three years. Three years, really. Now you got. Now you got. You you have a vacuum. You have kind of a leadership vacuum. Would you prefer that a bunch of guys take that over, or do you really want Corey Fisher to do it? Uh, I really like Corey Fisher to do it on the court. On the court. Because he's going to be the guy with the ball in his hands. Right. He's going to be the guy running the show. And last year, he would do it at times. But he was always cognizant of Scott. And Scott, he was such a dominant personality. And not purposely, he just was. You know, everybody respected him off the court. Everything he did, he was a great student, great person. I think everyone, all the guys that looked to him, like, I'm not worthy of him. And certainly on the court, they deferred to him. Definitely. There's no question about Definitely. that. Definitely. And Corey, there were a lot of times, what I would, if I had anything that I was upset about with him last year, it was he wasn't consistently on the attack that he would back off to defer to Scott. Well, and that was a function of Scott, without question, in your mind? Uh, both. Corey is a very, very respectful young man. He really is respectful of the program. He's respectful, he's respectful of Scotty. He's respectful of uh, his senior status. Uh, and I really want him to respect it this year and embrace it. Um, as far as the big guys are concerned, are you going to change the way you coach the team at all, and I asked you that over there. You change it functionally during the game because you, know, you have a different kind of team. There are basic core values that, that we have that, that will never change, but in terms of um, how we defend, you know, we might play a little bit more zone this year because we're bigger and um, we can cover ground. Um, and you've got an array of goalies back there you can put in at any one yeah, time. I mean, yeah. Armwood can do it, yeah. Yaru can do it. And we can even put those guys up top in our press. Yarwood, and, uh, Armwood, and, uh, and Sutton. So there are things we can do differently. But what we do, basically the X's and O's of what we do will be the same, but what we emphasize in terms of getting touches inside will be different. I loved the way last year that Wayans played as a freshman. He just had, you know, he had a profane word that I'm not going to say here, but we, I think we know what it is. He played with that thing. 
<laughs> and you saw him maybe this year stepping into a leadership role, and yet he's a sophomore, Fisher's a senior. What's the dynamic going to be there? I mean, am I worrying about something that shouldn't be worried about, or does it play itself out, or what? I don't. I don't think it's anything to worry about because they're they're going to. I'm not worried anyway, but you you might be worried. Well, but I, I understand your point that is it something that could be a problem? Yeah. But um, I, I don't think so. I think it's going to be something that's going to just going to grow and grow and make them better because Corey Fisher has no ego. He doesn't mind that. And uh, Corey Fisher will do whatever the team needs. So Corey sat behind a lot of guys at St. Pat's too for a, a yeah. while, didn't he? I mean, in high school, it wasn't like he was the man the whole time. And Corey's ready to be a go-to guy. Uh, Malik uh, is, is is similar to Corey in a way. He's ready to take over. He's confident in that role, but he wants to defer to Fisher when the when okay. the, the okay. game is on the line. And, I think we're going to be, it's going to be very valuable to us to have those two together. Well, next time we see you in here, it'll be like it always is with uh, 19,500, and you'll awesome have place. a suit on. Like <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Jay. You got it.